Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube page. Thank you all for helping me reach 400,000 subscribers. Listen, listen, listen. Please, please, please subscribe. I know, I know y'all be watching and not subscribing. I see the analytics. So please click subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and get ready for the ride. Thorgy, how, how's the ghost? How are things going with your ghost? Okay, so I did leave you guys left. Okay, so I told you about the ghost and like it's, it's always here, but then sometimes I don't see it for a long time and then it comes back. I was literally filming a cameo video for somebody. It's a true story. Literally filming a cameo video and something behind me, I use the other wall and something behind me literally moves and then slowly goes down the wall. And you have this like, is true. I got this on film, baby. So how do how do we? And it moved, this? and I and the, the whole cameo, the whole cameo became me. Like, did you see that? Oh my god! Ah! Like it was so crazy. I didn't even like wish them a happy birthday because I was like, you saw a real paranormal experience happening behind me. And then I go to find the cameo in my because it saves to your camera roll. Deleted. Thorgy. <laughs> I don't have any proof now. Sorry. And this is why I drink. <laughs> no, I'm serious though. I am serious. It happened, Bob. But you can see why I'm having a hard time believing and this. I can see why everyone's like, Borgie, you're so silly. Ha ha. I'm like, no, this fucking thing moved. No, okay. It was like, you see this little Thorgy sign? It's yeah. like, it did like, Okay, it did this, ready? It did this, then stopped, and then moved slowly down the wall, and then it was on the floor. And, and I was like, hold up, Marissa, for your 17th birthday video. Hold up, Marissa. And it was on the floor, and it, yeah. Everyone in the and then said it, it was Robbie Turner. <laughs> it was Robbie Turner. And then it was really funny because it actually flew up into the air and then started beating me like Shut this. And I was like, ah! Shut and it happened. It happened. Um, no, but all that did happen. And the ghost is back. And I don't know. So now I have holy water that I just go <laughs> every once in a while. Wait, that, that's, not holy, that's not really holy water. No, it's actually isopropyl <laughs> for like wigs and yeah, cleaning uh -oh. things. <laughs> I have a huge thing of 99% isopropyl alcohol, our sponsor for this week. Thank you so much. Also doubles as ghost repellent. Ooh, get away from me, baby. <laughs>
with Mitch or someone else or anything and do your own version, you know, Thor G. Thor's big drag race review or something, because I'm going to be out oh, and, I'll support, no. and I'll support you and be like, guys, go support my sister Thor G because I'm going to be, you know, filming the all winter season. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm going to be getting my, my throat <laughs> hurt. I'm going to get my throat surgery, but if I come back really skinny... Just know that I was also working out the whole time. <laughs> so off the bat, what's happening is Eureka uh, sends Silky home. And I got to say, honestly, I do think Eureka did sit, win that challenge. Silky's in a really good mood for someone who just got sent home, which is which I think shows how like mature she is. And I think that, honestly, going home was the best thing for Silky because no, she I, would, I think she would have been gone the next yeah. episode. Like, right, I don't right, think yeah. Eureka or Silky are going to win Drag Race. So I don't think coming back would have actually... I don't think either one's going to win. I think they're both too far behind to win the season. Um, and I think yeah. that going home like that would have kind of stained the, the amazing episode she had. Also, everyone who uh, watched last week and tipped Silky, she texted me and said that everyone is tipping her. Oh, so what is she? Yes. Oh, she's, good! She said the money's flying in. Thank you. She's I'll actually oh. read you all the direct text Silky sent me, and it really touched my heart. Oh, that's am- that's amazing. Did you watch the episode where she's like, "Thanks," because she yeah. didn't say thank you to me. Said, oh my god, thank you. They have shown me, show me. I, I reached out to her. I reached out to her. So, oh my god, thank you. They're showing me uh, some love today, and thank you so much. My life has truly changed in the last seven days. So yeah, and and honestly, she fucking deserves it. Like, go off. Like, she really. Bob, listen, you won. She didn't win twice, right? Dragon. It's like when you do that kind of redemption, when you do that kind of redemption, you're amazing. I looked at her. I was like, you are booked. She's yeah. going to be at books. You know what I mean? When you do that and you're that much fun and you had such a freaking blast on national television yeah. and you just had fun with drag and you threw your body on the floor and you made stupid props. You made everyone smile and laugh, and that, which I always say, is what drag is about for me, is being silly, laughing, and having fun, and making sure people laugh and have fun with you and just enjoy the art of um, ripping your hair out by pinning glue and wigs on your scalp. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, girl, honestly, that's amazing. I, I think that she has made one of the biggest impacts. I think I genuinely think that Silky is... is, is that episode was one of the biggest impacts in Drag Race history. She deserves everything that's happening for her. She's fierce. And I'm like, girl, that was everything. I'm obsessed. Good. I'm obsessed. Good for her. Um, Good for her. So she went home. Eureka is back in the competition. She 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 does, I don't want to, she does the tea of coffee. She, when she leaves, she goes, are you sure? Are you sure? And I think she did that before that episode aired. Because they were air, they were filmed really close together, so I don't think she saw Tea Coffee do that. Because they were both filmed at the beginning of quarantine. Wait, what? These they filmed at the same time, kind of thing? Not the same time because they have the same cast. But so I don't know if you remember, UK Two was filmed over like the course of eight months. They took a seventh month. They took a seven month break, and RuPaul came back. Got to it. And these were both okay. filmed All right. during lo- these were both filmed during lockdown. And they both said, are you sure? What well, Tia said, you sure? Um, and the children are still gagged. Oh, like, got it. Tia Coffee copied it from Silky. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Done. I always knew she was garbage. Always. Oh, my God. By the way, I think that your UK3 review has to be you and Tia Coffee the whole time. You and Tia Coffee. I got stopped. I got stopped. So much this week about that. And people were like, oh my God. And they were like, did you, everyone thought that I was in on the joke. They were like, you knew, you knew. And I was like, no, this is why I love Bob. And this is why I hate Bob so much is because this is when I'm like, I was like, fuck. and then afterwards I like bowed down to you. Like in my mind, I was like, ew, what a nightmare. That's something I would do. That's something I would do to you. And you gooped me and you got me. You got me so hard. You got me so hard. I got you. I was baby. laughing about it all week. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, now I need, I need to call. I mean, I need to have like a nice little moment with Tia Coffee and just like, we need to plan something, something. Stupid. Right. We need to plan. It was great. Maybe she could be my weekly guest. My weekly guest <laughs> for the UK three. That's literally what I just said. You're not even listening. But yeah, that's what I think. Oh, I think that, that she should be that for you. But anyway, that being said, y'all go flood authorities. I've been trying to, I don't know if anyone wants me to say this, but I've been trying to really 
impress upon Thorgy how huge, how huge and impactful mm -hmm. her social media presence could be because everyone eats you up so, so much. And my Thorgy, you got to go live. You got to make them YouTube. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thorgy's very like, yeah, yeah it just, it's all day. Like, this is my thing, too. It's like, I don't get how you do it and how other these queens or anybody or a, a much younger generation. I, I, I would have to wake up every morning at 1 p.m. when I wake up. Uh, and then all, <laughs> and then literally from the moment I wake up, there's no time to eat or do anything or call people or enjoy or watch a TV. I would have to constantly make content all day long. Yeah, all day, it's, it's all day, all so day every so day in order to keep up. And I'm like, how does everyone, like, how do I not, how am I not, I'm not, Am I the drama? I mean, I don't know. I just I know when Thorgy, when Thorgy wakes up at the crack of afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got it. Then it takes me at least two hours to get started. So 3 p.m. And I'm like, well, you know, how, I don't have enough time to yeah, you have to hang out with There's the ghost. Time in the day. You and the ghost have to feng shui your whole apartment. Yeah, an, an hour of this. An hour of this. <laughs> And then I'm like, it's 4 p.m. I there's not enough time in the day. There's not enough time in the day. So let's bring up. So let's talk about. Let's talk about Trinity's performance. I thought okay. that the okay, I, just the overview. I don't think anyone did horribly. This episode wasn't great for me because no one did terribly and no one did great. No one floundered yeah. to the ground and no one flourished the sky. So it was yeah. really hard to like, yeah, love um, or hate anyone. Here's my thing. I'm going to be a little harsh. Can I be honest and harsh? Drag because, her. Like, drag yeah, her. What, are they going to cancel me? I don't care. Uh, so here's the thing. So she started and I was like, work. But then my immediate thing was that it was in her reflection, in her voice. She was preaching, which immediately made me reminded of like how RuPaul told her people don't like to be preached at. And it was yeah. just in the way she was delivering the story where I was like, I'm being told. And I'm like, I don't want to be told. I want to be sucked into your story. And I wasn't right away. Then it was a lot of like, <laughs> you all heard like it. Bad. Thorgy wants to be sucked in. Keep going. <laughs> I want to be sucked now. Um, so, and then it kept going. <laughs> then it kept going. And I was like, there's no jokes. There was no jokes. Nothing was funny. And the story really wasn't that interesting. It was like a grinder hookup turned into a catfish story. I was like, uh huh. All right. It just wasn't funny. And then it got real serious with HIV. And I was like, whoa, okay, now we're really serious. And at the end, it was like, have your hot friend call me. From beginning to end, I just didn't get sucked in at all. It wasn't funny. The seriousness came out of nowhere. And I was just like, whoo, whoo. Like, yeah, it, and it I felt so like I was being yelled at. And I'm like, so, oh my do God. You ever listen to the, do you ever listen to the moth? No, you mentioned it before, and I, I wrote down, look up what Bob's talking about. <laughs> okay, so the Moth Story Hour, like, people tell these stories, sometimes they're really funny, sometimes they always have like some kind of point. It's like, it's really like uh, stories with these strong moral arcs and themes to them. This was really a lot less like the vagina monologues, because the vagina monologues, some of them are just plain funny. Um, and it was and more this, like this. The moth or yeah, mod the moth is yeah. the moth is a moth. lot more like what we saw here today. And I agree that her story was it wasn't great. None of these stories were great. None of these stories are winning a Pulitzer. None of them are winning the Antonio Award. If the cut monologues yeah. went on Broadway, it was shut down after a week. That being said, I thought that she did a decent job with her performance. I thought she yeah. looked good. Um, but I there is just this thing like first of all, they're performing for practically no one. That's I know, the just the judges, problem. yeah. Just the judges, man, which makes it harder all off the bat. Oh, you're right. Once you put it in perspective, there's nobody going, ha, 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 because as a storyteller, that makes you go, oh, you like that joke? I'll tell you another. Yeah, because it, yeah, was, right. because it was done during quarantine, so they didn't have a live audience. So the fact that there's no one in the audience, the judges are going, <laughs> And then you get in like, your head when a joke doesn't land. It could be funny, right? but if nobody laughs, you go, oh, I'm bombing, oh. Exactly. It, it makes it really tough. It, it, honestly, it's kind of hard to watch as an audience member. They should not make them do stand up or any kind of storytelling when they don't. When we don't have an audience to laugh. Audience. So did, yeah. They did the same thing during season um, twelve with yeah. Jada Essence Hall. They're doing it again yeah. here. I, I don't like. It's very uncomfortable to see as a viewer um, or or fucking at least just make the judges laugh harder. Like, tell them to lean in. Like, goddamn, help a bitch out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, 
Kylie. Yeah. Kylie. So, oh, so I liked looks- Kylie right away. She sucked me in. I was like, this is fun. This is real. God. Stop saying you got sucked in. <laughs> well, when somebody tells a story, I get really bored really quickly. I'm like, ugh, now I need to fake like I'm listening. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But when somebody or sucks me in, actually- in and then she fakes <laughs> <laughs> and, but then I tell him, Shh, listen, Kylie's telling a story. And I was like, all right, this is cool. I don't know. I so Kylie, so, so Kylie, Kylie sucked you in. Got it. Um, I can't stop saying that. But I feel like Kylie's story was good. Kylie was, Kylie felt like she was a guest on a podcast. It didn't feel super acting. Like, it just didn't feel like she was acting a lot, which seemed, I think that was what was great. I liked her talking of like, her story was relatable. Um, I, I, I actually, she said one detail that really painted a whole picture for me. She said, um, they were like, go white girl, go, which let, which immediately told me that she was in a black club and something about that really, really, she didn't say I was in an all black club, which would have been probably. Wait, did you love, was, did you love it though? When it like go white girl, <laughs> like you kind of loved it. You loved it. Go white girl was everything. It was, it was a really, I really like what she said. Go white girl. Cause it, I mean, it really painted a. It painted, very, it painted a picture of where she was. Yeah. Yes. Without saying I was the only white person there. Um, (laughs) let's move on to Raja O'Hara. Um, Raja, let's talk about her look. Do you like this look? She kind of, it looks a little like pajamas. Ugh, no. And it was wrinkled. And the story was... Bothered me. Bothered me so much the whole time. And she loves a good pant. It bothered me the whole time with the paint, the wrinkles. I'm just like, ah! And she actually probably tried to like steam them out, but this fabric is really difficult. It just could not pay attention to anything else except the wrinkles. I like that she wears pants. I think the gloves were too much. And the purple is annoying me now. <laughs> How did you feel about the tuck story? <sighs> anyway, let's move on to Ginger Minch. Can I say a controversial statement? Yes, please. Love it. I don't believe this happened. <laughs> is that horrible? <laughs> Why is that controversial? It's your opinion, and it definitely didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Complete lies. Complete lies. This is not real. <laughs> like, <laughs> none of that happened. No. She saw the red shoes backstage, and she goes, all right, I can concoct a story about that with those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> it just seemed really coincidental. And she had the shoes there, and like she happened to be watching, playing around in Wizard of Oz. And also, her <laughs> mom pulled her to the other room and was like, "I need to see you in the other room." And then had like a also. Secret by the chat. way, your dad's hiding in a closet. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> Is, and also, like, when she goes up and she says stuff, and, like, we, we want conversation, and she's clearly saying stuff that she said before. Like, it is, like, and it's fine. You know, when I, when I was in data school, we learned, when I was in data school, oh, we learned stop. about the illusion even. of the first time, and Ginger Man was not giving me the illusion of the first time. I did not feel like this was the first time she had said this. I felt like I was at the end of her tour. Like the last stop <laughs> on her tour, <laughs> she had told the story. A there are going to be times. videos of everyone filming illegally, and she tells the story, and she goes, and here are the shoes. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. She did tell the story at the end of every one of her shows. It, oh, my God. It, I love it. You know, it was just, oh, uh, it, it. And there, I want to say out loud, there is a chance that this fully <laughs> happened. But as an audience member watching it, I was having a hard time believing. But did it really need to be some true, real story? I mean, can't she? I would, if I told a story, I always exaggerate things uh, to the point where, like, the story, the fundamental story is still real. However, to tell a good story, you have to exaggerate certain things. You have to stretch them out. You have to make it more interesting and then come to a point at the end anyway. And I think she did that. She is very Broadway. You know, the story Man doesn't is- have to be true, but I have to believe it's true. That's the Ooh, important so part. So now you're just getting personal. <laughs> I'm not getting personal. Oh, so it wasn't about okay, the story. Sorry. It's that you hated the way she told that fake story, Did, bitch. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's the question, be honest. Did you believe the story? No. From the very beginning uh, to the end, no. 
I it, I was having a hard time believing it, and it, that's what I felt like. I was like watching a play. It felt like watching a play. It was very Broadway. That's what I'm saying. It's very Broadway, but she is really Broadway. When I saw it, I was like, this is Ginger. She knows how to tell a story. There's no pause. There's no like doubt in her mind. She knows how to land a punch. She knows how to land a joke and she knows how to finish a story. But it was so perfect and clean as a story that it is hard to believe when, you know, it is, it's, it is, but it is Ginger. She tells a great story. So I just, you know, whatever. I don't I mean, she might as well have got there and told Lord of the Rings because I, I would have believed that. Just and then as as this little, <laughs> this little monster came out of the rocks called Gay. Gay, like exactly. you have to change the name. Change the name. You have to change the name. <laughs> Lord of the Cock Rings. Uh, let's yeah, go like, on wait. to Eureka. <laughs> let's go this? to Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep going with this. Elijah Weed right. uh, came out. All right. Anyway. So, okay. Eureka. My first thought was, holy shit, Eureka looks good. Really good. Uh, this is the bunny look, right? Oh, yeah, she looked amazing. Yes. Yeah, she looked so yeah. good. I was like, her body was right. right. Yeah, yeah, she looks amazing. She, and this story was the story itself brilliant. It, had, you know, what I will say what what I like about the story. It felt like we were like she was telling it at a party. That's what I did like. It this yeah. story felt like we were at a party with her, and yeah. she was telling it. And if I was at a party when she told the story, I would have laughed my ass off. And yeah. I know that I, 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 Eureka shitting the bed is believable, or Eureka shitting her tights is believable, or shitting her pants, or shitting, that is believable. Oh my God. Me. It is, well, yeah. I mean, now is it believable to happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you a fun story about Eureka from um, We're Here? So we're, we're getting our food orders, and they were like, Eureka, do you want the chicken sandwich again, or something like that? And she goes, no, girl, I don't, I don't eat, I'm vegetarian now, girl. And they were like, oh, you, oh, you were vegetarian now? Like, what happened? Like, you were a vegetarian Like She goes, girl, I had a dream. I was a cow, and I was getting slaughtered. <laughs> she said, girl, I had a dream that a cow was getting slaughtered. Girl, I was the cow. Your girl, voice, I, was the cow. I have to say, your imitation, your voice of Eureka has gotten perfect. I really, <laughs> I, it's, a, it's like creeping me out. You actually girl. sound like her. It's amazing. No, girl. I, I mean, I hear it so much. Girl, I'm about to. Girl, y'all about to cry. Y'all oh gonna cry. It's so good. It's so good. You're so creeping me out. Um, I'm so, had I'm a dream. So I can I see her saying this. She really had a dream about a cow. She really thought she was being. Yes, it's believable. She probably thought that. Yes. That shit tickled me when she said, "Girl, I had a dream of a cow. Girl, out a girl. I was the cow." And so now I started teasing her because I uh, I don't eat. Um, like she was like, "You want a carrot?" I said, "Girl, I had a dream. I was a carrot." <laughs> <laughs> they, were making, they were making salads. Girl, I was the carrot. <laughs> I love Eureka so much. She's so stupid. <laughs> what, what, what did you think about this? I mean, did you feel like her story? I, I liked her delivery. It felt yeah. real to me. It felt like a fun story to hear at a party. It wasn't the best story. And there was practice. I do like, like, the show must go on. The theme can be vague. It wasn't, yeah. the, it wasn't the most brilliant story, but I really enjoyed it. The way she told it, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, also, I'm just a little bit of like a conservative <laughs> person. You know, no. I'm a conservative person with stories about poop and vomit and diarrhea and like pissing and like like when you get that vulgar, it's always like a I'll steer away from that with the audience because you always turn people off. So when she started, I was yeah. like, oh, this is gonna be a lot of diarrhea stories and brown mounds and stuff like that, and. I think she put in just, she sprinkled it in just enough because also this is the other thing. As she was telling the story, you, my mind go went visual. I followed her. I knew what the room looked like. I know what the girl, the hostess of the show looked like. I imagined her trying to run to the bathroom after the show. You know, like I yes. saw it. This makes a good storyteller does. You know what I mean? Like when Eureka was yeah. telling the story, I was like, girl, everything you, you, she paints a picture with words. And you're it's there true. with her as if you were in the room. And I was like, she and was I, the only one who was able to do that for me. So I thought that was very, very cool. And I like how she made little points of being like, she like I love the visual of her like trying to make it to the bathroom, but being stopped right before. And then be like, <laughs> well, I saw her like, back. holding like, her butt, like, running, being like, what girl? Yeah, I want that hundred dollars. I guess I can get to this number really quick. <laughs> right. The theme of the runway is, oops, I did it again, fashion faux pas. You gotta turn a fashion fail into a fashion fantasy. 
let's go into these looks. Uh, let's let's yeah, start with the judges' cool. looks. Let's start with the judges' looks. RuPaul is in this pantsuit, um, and I think she looks she looks good. This is my best, out, my favorite outfit. Oh, of I kind of loved her. it. I loved it. I thought it was so cool. You know, you know what I'm obsessed with? What her waist is so tiny. Yeah, I, I did not like this thing. It just see, this it is was a strange. Weird thing. Yeah, like fashion fit. Like, oops, my costume is accidentally falling apart on purpose. This look <laughs> is really good. The safety pins are... It, I agree with Michelle. It, it is not enough of the category for this look to be good. I do yeah. like the surprise of it, but it also looks a little bit Vivian Westwood, like it could be for real. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, the if it was like, oops, fashion, like mistake like you you fucked up and something I, I actually would go humorous with this because i think it's a very humorous runway challenge right but Got this it. actually I, I you stole the words right out of my head it's very vivian west was very designer like designers use this to look like oh it's on purpose so maybe it's a little too clean for me because i wanted a little bit of sloppiness like a little bit of humor uh, <laughs> Humor, Thorgy. What the fuck is humor? Oh, you're making fun of my pronunciation. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna spell something. I want you to pronounce it. H U E. Pronounce that. <laughs> okay. Well, that is well. Okay, <clears throat> because it differentiates <laughs> between the word you and you, because it's a different word. I would say you, because otherwise I say you. And everyone goes, me? And I'm like, no, you. Because it's the same okay, what do you, How about the guy who plays um, Wolverine? What's his name? <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Well, what is it? Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Clearly, that's how I'm I was, sorry. Yeah. That is so funny. Good um, old you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. It's good to see you, you. Um, hey, you! Right. <laughs> okay, so let's go into uh, Raja's look. My only thing that I don't understand is, is this supposed to be pants or is it supposed to be a dress? I don't know. It just wasn't enough for me. And I don't but think I it's do the get... girl's fault. The it's the category. This category is yeah. not good. And her story did make sense. She goes, oh, do you know those times where somebody opens up the dressing room and you're half-dressed? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I get so, that, but I just don't understand if it's a, are, are both her legs supposed to be in the, but it looked like a pant leg. Um, I'm just, she, um, she always yeah, looks gorgeous. Right. I just, I just can't tell if like, but also was she still sewing the outfit? Does it need a leg? What's going on? Is it a big zipper up the side that she didn't get to? Let's go to Kylie. It's really kind of a coincidence that Kylie ended up doing this corn dog look. <laughs> Right? I'm sorry. Wait, what? yes. Well, that, but it, ugh. The last second when she whipped out that corn dog from her skirt, I was like, ugh. I immediately thought of like poopy jalapeno Eureka's butt. I was like, <laughs> like immediate. I was just like, oh. Eh. You don't like blue humor. And honestly, is that my thing either? Like um, poop and farts. I'm just like, eh. Unless it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like disgusting humor. It's like, ugh. I don't think this look was brilliant, but I didn't hate it. Like, it's, it, this look is fine. It's, honestly, I really think it's the category. It's the category. Yeah. So what was, wait, what it's, was her, what was the mistake? What was the blooper? I don't get it. All, all the all the food stains. She has mustard and ketchup all over her outfit. Oh. <laughs> I literally did not get it. I was like, what? Oh, I well, thought it was just a she was design the that was either. really cool. So she was like, I'm the messiest eater ever. Oh, um, God, yeah. And I got food. See, I, I really, throat. I didn't even see her because of the corn dog, like, boop, like diarrhea corn dog. I was like, oop, I yeah. don't even know who you are. I don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> so let's go to Ginger Minx. Ginger Minx's look was really good. I love this look. And this, however, she got the fucking curling iron sizzling was very brilliant. Cool. Yeah, the smoke. It I was, was like, ooh, what did you use to do that? That's very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it's like a prop uh, curling iron because she did it again in her hand. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. 
I thought she had the bright. It's a I thought this was really that good. smokes or something. Who knows? It was anyway, really good. This was a cool. great idea. She, she. I think she. This is probably from the category my favorite one. Yeah, and she was. Category. It was a whole performance as well. Like, and then when she touched her hand, when she prepared to put yeah. like burns on her hand, I'm like, this is funny. This is actually very funny. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, let's go into Eureka O'Hara, who is um, sweaty and um, got her dress stuck in her panties, and <laughs> she also has. Um, uh, uh, TP on her shoe, which I, I gotta say, this is actually every drag queen has experienced some of this. Yes, the, the sweat stains, your skirt being the tucked in on your the underwear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. this, this is all Everybody. of this is actually very real. <laughs> yes, um, and I, 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 I thought she actually did a pretty good job. Um, yeah, and I get these looks are supposed to be kind of crunchy, so I get it. Um, but I think she did a pretty good job considering the assignment. It wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't the worst, you know? I do think yeah. she did a pretty good job um, with this, with this one, in my opinion. Yes. So they do the challenge. Eureka wins this challenge. Do you think Eureka deserved to win? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honest, yeah. To be honest, sure. I was like, Yeah, sure. see, this is hard because it was like a hard, it was a hard episode. This is why both of us, before we started, I was like, I didn't take a lot of notes this week. I usually get excited and my pen is like, ah! This week I was like, eh! I, I didn't really love any of them and I didn't hate any of them. It was just eh! Yeah. So Eureka won and that, yes, her story was amazing. I, I like it. It was funny. It made me laugh and uh, it gave me visuals and, she was and her look was good. And the runway was funny. So <laughs> alright, yeah. And then the lipstick assassin. So they're doing the little sit back to chat. What I found really interesting during this chat was Eureka basically, in so many words, flat out told Kylie and Ginger that she wasn't sending them home. Did you notice that? <laughs> yeah, but it was funny. Because when she talked to Raja and Trinity, she was like, yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah, you're in a rough situation. Yeah, I feel so bad also, for you. This but is, I would have done this too. I would have been Eureka sitting there and being like, you know, it's a really hard decision. I just have to do what's right for me. But with that said, Kylie, I'm just going to send you home. <laughs> and Kyla was right? like, wait, what? I, I was funny. I was funny. But like she joked with Ginger being like, I'm, I'm going to send you home. Just kidding. It would never. Anyway, which one of these other bitches? And then she was like, who would you send home to Kylie? I was like, she just basically told Ginger and Kylie, you're both safe. So which if she did choose them, if she me. did choose them, she would have defended like, I told you I was going to vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Eureka she was like, I wasn't bitch, that I wasn't. shady girl. I know she's that shady. She is so shady. I love that one. She's like, she's like, bitch, I wasn't joking. Bitch, I was not joking. I was. I told um, you. I told you. You can't be upset now. <laughs> uh, Lipstick Assassin is um, the winner of season 12, Ms. Jada Essence Hall, yeah. the Essence of Beauty. And um, I, I actually think Eureka won the lip sync. Oh, really? Uh... You know what it is? I think for that kind of song and that kind of like fun, Eureka's outfit, albeit amazing, I think it got in the way of me just watching her lip sync the song. I think the outfit was just too much. Maybe you're no? right. Maybe yeah. I don't. Maybe maybe I just wasn't super invested in this number and like just didn't care. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I just, I like clown. Maybe I just enjoyed the clown outfit. So you were like, ooh, the outfit, um, but I was like, the outfit guy, I said, take the outfit. It was like in the way for me. And Jada was just beautiful and like really having a good time. And I was like, well, you know, she went to lip sync for me. Yeah, maybe you're right. I mean, I'm easily swayed. And I I don't think this lip sync was like a, a, a knockout for either of them. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was perfectly fine. But it was a, Wait, it was a double chante. But more importantly, I shouldn't have been eliminated for Stevie Nicks. So let's just get to the end oh of the episode. God. Um, oh my God. see where we go from here. So, <laughs> so, they, so they, they both win, and then we wrote, I, we we never had them both win and send two girls home, but they, everyone voted for Trinity. I think I, I'm willing to bet across the board everyone voted for Trinity. Yeah, we're gonna see next Trinity, time. I mean, yeah, Trinity. I mean, we, oh, no, we're not. also we're in not Untucked. I haven't, watched, I, I, haven't watched, I haven't watched Untucked yet, but it's in Untucked. Trinity was just uh, really down and not. She just like energy sucker and like just like really just yeah she was moody and just like a defeatist. It was like an easy choice. It was like a lamb being slaughtered that knows it's gonna die. It's like woo. Ugh. 
<laughs> yeah, right. I mean, Eureka won. I do not think Eureka's going to win Drag Race. I will say this. I'm having a very hard time. I will say this is the first time where there have been three people. I'm like, any one of these three people could win and I wouldn't care. For me, it could be, no, two people. It's just two now. If Raja or Kylie wins, I'll be like, honestly, they're both great. Raja and Kylie are both doing a really good job. They're phenomenal. Um, it's, they're great. <laughs> um, and it's, and what, what do you say? I, I just, I'm waiting for you to finish because I'm like, I'm completely opposite than you. I think Ginger Minge is going to win. Not who is going to win, who you think should win. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, that's hard. It, who do you who do you, who do you want to win? Oh, that's hard. On Georgie's huge drag race. Um, they're all lovely. Thank you so much. They're all wonderful. <laughs> I don't know. You should win. Come on. But my mind is just set on Ginger, and as I think about Ginger, it's like she really was consistently herself. She might have been corny and like made me lie her way through a story, but. It's still her, and like her looks are funny. Also, if there's anybody who like in the Hall of Fame deserves to have their face up there, it's Ginger. She's been doing it forever. She's always like kind of, I don't know. I just like Ginger. I just think she's done consistently well in in what we're and see. But then Kylie's amazing too, and it would change the whole history of the whole show to have somebody uh, like Kylie be a, a winner of it. It would open up so many things. It would speak to so many new generations of kids. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then Eureka's amazing, and I have I literally have spoken so highly of Eureka every single episode. She makes me laugh. She is polished. She's amazing in every way. And Raja's Raja's not an all star winner for me. However, I like her. I like watching her on the show. I think she's amazing, funny, and really cool. And I can't wait to work with her and meet her. But I don't know. I just Ginger. I just think Ginger's poised for the win, and that's my fucking opinion. <laughs> To be honest, they're all doing a good job. If Ginger Minj wins, it won't be it won't be weird. She's doing a great. I don't think that the idea that she's been doing it forever. I don't think she's been doing it longer than Kylie or Raja. Raja was at your fucking college his freshman year. All right. So clearly, Raja's been doing it apart everything I just said. Like, just let me. Say what I'm saying. Ra I mean, you and I went. We're the same age. You and I started college 16 years ago. So clearly, Raja also has been doing it forever. Yeah. Like Raja, they've all been doing it. Eureka's also started drag. She was like eight, 19. I know. So I know. they've all been doing drag forever. They Eureka and Ginger have both been on three seasons of Drag Race. Sonique was on the second season. Raja performed at the. Uh, Freshman orientation of of you know of 1968. They've all been around forever. I think they're really all good. Um, and if Ginger wins, I, I won't be I won't be like what the fuck. I'm like yeah, she did a good job. Yeah, That's good. the truth. They've they've all done a good job. This is I actually think I'm realizing now. I think I prefer a season where there's like one or two people who are clearly gonna win Ooh. as opposed to being like hey, any one of them. I do think, however, in the final episode, there's going to be a nice little, like, surprise <laughs> from RuPaul, and it's Serena Chacha is going to win. I really think this is going to happen. I'm really hoping it happens. It's going to be amazing. Um, all right, so I think we did. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the uh, Stereo app. We are um, going to finish out our session here. Thank you all so very much, and we're going to end Stereo. All right, peace, everyone. Bye.